And then it becomes important to me because I know what the railroad track means. Before, I saw Mickey Mouse, I saw these old spikes. I said, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe in the back of my mind it was starting to form that that might have something to do with trains, but it wasn't quite there. The responsibility of the artist is to make that happen. So this is David. So you have to focus on how can I make that railroad track read? So, so when people see it, it won't just be me thinking about a railroad track and putting in what I think of as a symbol of a railroad track. It'll hit the motif where everyone who has a pretty average experience of the history of the Holocaust, whatever they learned in sixth grade or whatever they learned as a Jew growing up, they will see that and they will think. Or as a Christian or as a Hindu or as a Muslim or whatever. Well, that gets tougher, obviously. That gets tougher because that motif may not be as culturally universal. But at least within the culture that you know it should hit, is it hitting? Now, you can test that and ask people specifically, what do you see when you look at this section? And if they're not seeing railroad track, then you have to ask yourself, have I failed? You and really have to ask yourself that. That's the responsibility of the artist. Well, some people may not recognize that they're actually railway spikes. They might not have ever seen a railway spike. Then the question is, is are you succeeding in conveying the motif that you want to convey? Thank you. Tell me what you think about Mickey. Well, why? now that I know that this is a railroad track, Mickey, to me, is just kind of the antithesis. So, so David, I'm going to introduce David Sokol here, has a uh, master's degree in what videography and photography, photography well-versed in arts. cinema, aesthetic, conceptual arts, and so on. And you're familiar with 20th century film. Why might Mickey Mouse be in this artwork? Here's well, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's Mickey. The, the banality of evil. Obviously, people in the United States are watching Mickey Mouse movies while the Holocaust is proceeding and people are being murdered. Or even in the present. We live in a present where there is no Holocaust happening, at least not to us. What about so we live in the Mickey Mouse present where we can laugh and watch TV, but in the background is this railroad track in the past carrying people to their death. What about so all the Europeans? Poignant. It becomes poignant once I know what the motif is, but before I knew what the motif but is, you could have there was no poignancy. But for Mickey Mouse, you could make relevancy to the fact that if you're familiar with the history of Mickey Mouse and Disney, Mickey Mouse was, was um, aired in the 1930s. Millions of Europeans would have been familiar with Mickey, including victims of the Nazis, Jewish and non-Jewish really? alike. So um, I'll add to that as a postscript. My grandmother, I have no idea if she ever saw a movie in her life. It's certainly possible that at the Jewish old folks home in Bialystok, they might have brought in a movie projector and showed movies including Mickey Mouse. It's possible. So certainly Jewish victims of the Nazis and non-Jewish victims of the Nazis who were not shtetl, you know, small town agrarian uh, people right. who lived in cities of whatever ethnic religious background right. would have been familiar with movies of all sorts, so and uh, all throughout you've, Europe. You've portrayed with words an absolutely powerful and moving concept, mm -hmm. which is the concept of your great-grandmother, who you are a relative of, who you have a deep genetic connection to, a cultural connection to, who died in the Holocaust, I'm mm -hmm. presuming, who at one moment in her life before dying in the Holocaust might have been sitting in a theater somewhere in Bialystok looking at a Mickey Mouse film. It's po certainly possible. That becomes a powerful image. How do you convey that? You could do it through just words, through poetry. But how do you do that with visual art? I've done it right here. You <laughs> feel that you have. Well, I've just... You feel I've, that you I've, have because you know the story. I've raised... You've got uh, to carry I've, that story so that I can see it. Well, label copy signage mm -hmm. uh, will include, as well as uh, people who watch... Uh, there's a... Uh, um, a 34-minute video up of the creation of this, which includes some footage with people uh, and I talking about the work. So right. the people who view that, and if that's, that's shown right. in a gallery, uh, like on a, a TV monitor or whatever, then people can watch that if they want to learn more about the work in addition to what the label signage is. Right. I'll just I'm add 30 more seconds here. Um, the Père Jacques work, anything you'd like to say, kind of comparable to what we were no, talking I'm about here? I'm out of breath. There is um, one uh, railway spike here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, David Sokol uh, uh, added uh, specifically for your aesthetic. Uh, I'm teasing, but <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I took a hammer and I took that thing and I knocked yeah. it in there. Actually, I'm sorry. There's three. <laughs> there's right. two it's, more right it's there. The, it's the yeah. Trinity again. Yeah. Yeah. The, the thing I notice about this spike versus these, these are almost impotent and old and worn, whereas this spike is cutting in there and doing harm. So it, it conveys, again, uh, this one too. This one, and there's one more down here. Yeah. But this one so. the most for me, this one a little bit, but this one the most mm. has a feeling of cutting in there, mm. which conveys some of that suffering and that pain. This one doesn't do that the not same way Not as much, uh -huh. I guess maybe because it's not as covered as uh -huh. much. It's just uh -huh. a smaller cut. So I just want to mention reviewers who didn't hear the what we were talking about several sentences worth before I turned the camera on is that David asked me what the symbolism of this was and uh, he was unable to come up with anything on his own and I said a couple of possibilities actually you did come up with one thing which I forget now railroad tracks well actually I mentioned railway tracks right. and just as you were saying it, I was thinking it <laughs> uh, I mentioned also in terms of Christianity right. and the failure of Christianity in perpetrating the mass murder of European Jewry and Romani Sinti Gypsy peoples. Mm -hmm. We have a three verticals. The Trinity, a kind of almost like primeval um, visual iconographic image of Christianity and uh, something um, which people may or may not come to on their own if they think about where I, if I ask a question, like say at a gallery, a tour, how many of these verticals do you see there? Or slightly diagonal. People say three. And what does three connote in terms of Christian history? Uh, when you first so, said three, I thought of a samech, which is shalom. Aha. Uh -huh. huh. Or shalem, completeness. Aha. Uh -huh. huh. huh. Very good. Thank you. We're just about seven minutes here. Thank you, David Sokol. You're welcome.